We are live. Okay. Let me double check the mic. Literally sat down like 20 seconds right ago. Right out of the shower. <laughs> right out of the shower. That's right. You, you see wet hair, Brian. Wet, wet mullet hair, Brian. Oh, it's, it's getting mullety. There's a party in the back there. It's not a party I want to go to. Rachel wants nothing to do with this party. Hello? <laughs> So, Rachel, I tried putting the mic over here because I got feedback that your voice carries a little better than mine. Well, the mine. mic was closer to me last time. It was, but I think it needs to be closer than me. Okay. I've gotten this feedback, too, in other videos with Drew that he's louder than Interesting. me. Interesting. I think I just have a, I think I have like a Bob Ross, maybe soothing voice. No. Not so much. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, yes. It's time to geek out. Okay. So, let's see here. Oh, my gosh. Bunch of comments going in here. They were talking before you out here. Yes, indeed. Pre-partying. Pre That's right. All right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. All right, seems like everybody's just kind of bantering and stuff. So uh, yeah, here it's Wednesday. It's June 17th now, mid-June. We're almost halfway done with 2020. We've been shut down for three months. Yeah, not shut down. We've I mean... Fully remote. There's Our a lot children of, have been shut down for three months. There's, there's a lot of stores that are closed. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not not the same. That's right. Yeah, go for the questions. Bring it on. Indeed. All right. Crystal says my voice is a little bit low, but this mic should pick it up clearly. It's good. it's good today. Okay. All right. We'll try that. We'll try the mic in front of me. Is it question time, Trish? Yes. Go ahead. Ask away. While you're asking, did want to point out the Arrow Antique Rose as well as the Turquoise are back in stock. This is a limited shipment again. There will be more later on, kind of a, a regular thing, probably months from now. But if you're interested, get on it. They look amazing. All right. Chantal says, in terms of how they were made, what's the difference between a modern soft nib and a vintage flex? So this is something that gets talked about a lot. And again, I'm not like a vintage pen expert. I know enough to be dangerous. Um, it's tough to say because vintage flex is not one thing. You know, it's not like it was done one way and that's how they all were. So when you're talking about vintage flex, that could mean just about anything. But I think traditionally people are thinking of like the super, super flexible, soft, luxurious, kind of the extreme wet noodle. good end of it. Yes, typically called a wet noodle. I don't know why, quite honestly, it's called that. You don't write with noodles, so I don't really know. But um, <laughs> I think part of it has to do with, um, you know, their, their older pens, they've been used a lot and maybe broken in a bit. Um, I think some of it has to do with just the way they were manufactured. There was equipment that was specialized at that time. There were nib workers that were specialized at that time that just really aren't around tradespeople that um, are not really around anymore. So I think that largely has a lot to do with it. it, has to do with specialized knowledge and equipment that just isn't around anymore because the demand has just gone away and these skill sets have not been passed on. So that's largely, I think, what it has to do with it. All a lot right. of questions. All right, great. Let's keep rolling. Uh, we missed some. Let's go back up. Okay. Uh, we don't have the Sailor Wicked Witch of the West to show you. Um, if we did, we would. Um, I think our shipment's coming on Monday. Um, I will say this has been a very hot, anticipated pen. So this is the Sailor 1911 Wicked Witch of the West in the small and the large size. It's a purple with gunmetal trim, black nib, the whole thing, black ion trim. Um, very That's limited quantities awesome. for the launch. It is a regular edition. It's North American exclusive, but the first shipment is very limited. So like all the retailers are getting shorted. Our wait list is including us, including us. Um, as I said, all the retailers, um, our wait list is strong. So this is the sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's it'll probably go quickly. So sign up for that email notification, but there will be a restock in like a month. It's not like a one and done. So it's not a one and done. Do... It's, it'll be a, like six yeah. months from now, you'll be able to get one no problem. It's yeah. just when they are first launched, they're a little bit limited. So if we sell out, we'll have more in about a month and then more after that. It's kind of like, and there was another question about the Twisby 580 ALR Prussian Blue. When are we getting more? Mm -hmm. Probably about a month. We haven't really heard yet, but it's the same sort of thing. Anything that's new goes a little quickly and then eventually gets gets back to normal. So yeah. um, if we had it, we would show you. We'll show you next week for sure. Um, we are very excited about that one too. Yeah. Um, Fantastic Life says Franklin Christoph collab. We do do them once a year because- We're limited Frank, to once a year. That's what Franklin Christoph uh, and it allows us to do. It's a hundred pens once a year. 
and that's what we get. And so it'll probably be two, four. And they're gone. Because <laughs> um, we did one, we launched it like January, but it actually counted as last year's edition. We just launched it late. Yeah, we'll do so one. So there should be one Hopefully towards the year. end of this year. Um, we haven't picked it or designed it yet, but that's that's what I'm imagining. We're, it's just 100 a year. That's what I would hope, but it's really up to Franklin Kristoff because they're the ones that make the bends. So. Um, okay, Arc Image says, if a fountain pen is mightier than a sword, have you ever killed someone with your pen? No, never committed murder. Um, I'm not aware of anyone that has ever been like. I don't know if this is a, a seriously real, wounded. Like a, an authentic question. It's anyway. We'll move on. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a different question. I was reading it. Here's the one that I was meant to read from Chantel. Okay, and for the modern quill nib, what did Dante mean when he talked about the laminating process in its manufacturing epoch? Okay, so we just posted a video uh, about the Peniter Avatar Deluxe. Deluxe. What he was talking about was the plating. So they have gold nib uh, as an option on these new avatars. And he was talking about the fact that they have yellow gold. I mean, all gold is yellow. In order to make it a different color, you have to introduce different metals. So when you so have- just plating. Yes, which has a, a plating to it. So what you have is these pens and many other fountain pens, basically anything that's not a yellow nib that is made of gold has a plating on top of it. That's what he was talking about with laminating. English is not his first language, so he said laminating. It's really the same concept, but it's technically, it's ionized plating. Any news on a diamine ink vent calendar for this year? I have not heard. Last year, we definitely heard by this time because they were shipping in like August. I have not heard anything for this year. I wonder if because they did the blue edition that that's kind of the new thing for the year. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as we know, we'll let you know. But as of right now, I've not heard. They were shut down for a good little bit. So were, it's possible that it could be delayed or- we Or maybe they, I mean, that's a lot to come up with 25 new colors. <laughs> that is know, a lot. That are all like Christmas themed. I don't know how long they were. Year. Yeah. I don't know how long they were working on the previous one before they released well, it. Well, like they're gonna run out of names. Like they've already done like happy holidays and season greetings. It'll be like, Frosty Chill and just Gingerbread Snowman. I don't know. Like they're <laughs> Gingerbread Snowman. I'm <laughs> just trying to like okay. put holiday words together. Um, Dana sure asked, something. hey guys, is there any way to clean the cap insert on my Sailor Pro Gear Slim? Cap insert on the Pro Gear Slim. This is a Good mini question. But, um, I do have some. The cap insert is like what goes it literally inside yeah, the cap. Yeah, it's, so it's, I, I've removed it, very well, but. not really. I've removed it on other pens like Twisby and Pilot and stuff like With, that. With like the rubber band on the pencil? Yeah, thing. unless it's somehow attached inside there, which I honestly which haven't, could be glued. Sometimes I haven't tried glued. to take it out. It's rare, but usually they're just friction fit inserted. So it's possible you could use some sort of friction thing. A rubber band wrapped around the end of a pencil often works pretty well for most pens. I just haven't really messed around with it. So I'm going to see if I have one and if I can. Um, Bob, yes, I did review the new diamond inks. Um, they're not on the blog. If you go to our product pages on our website, like if you go to the bottle or the sample, it's one of the secondary images, but we haven't put it into a, a blog format yet. But we do, we did get them all scanned and they are online. You can move this over if you want. So um, I'm skipping around a couple of questions because okay. this is kind of relevant. I'm wanting to, I was. Anna Boo once is saying, they're asking, I was wanting to buy one of the new Sailor Pro Gear Slim, the fairy tale collection for my graduation next year. Are special edition pens around hand. for that long? Um, these generally are. Um, the Pro Gear Slim collection before that, the Four Seasons, the Shikiori, those came out quite a few years ago and they're still around. I have not heard of any plans for them to stop making the Japanese fairy tale. I can't promise or guarantee um, stock availability a year from now, but I, my, all my understanding is they'll continue to produce these likely for several years. Yeah. I'm looking for a rubber band. That's why I'm looking around like a crazy person. I mean, here. We, oh, here's a hair. I'll find a rubber band. That's not going to work. That's too slick. My hair rubber band. Um, right. When did you start collecting fountain pens? Um, that started when we started the business uh, 10 and a half years ago now. It's been 11 years now. Since we started, well, since we started the fountain pen retail thing. Yeah, but I mean, I bought pens before we started that's retailing true. them. I bought pens the summer of 2009, so that's been 11 years for me. Um, we weren't planning on stocking the new, uh, is it Pascribe? Pascribe? Um, Rodeo pads? Um, because they're very um, large and they don't fit in our normal shipping boxes. They're like an oversized A4, so I wasn't planning on stocking them. I also have not seen them in use with fountain pens yet, although I heard he does have some on his Instagram. I just haven't looked. 
Um, so not immediate plans, but you know, we can consider if there's interest. They're just they're really large for shipping, so it logistically is hard for us. So I just pulled out the insert. This is the same way that this insert works on the Pilot Custom 74, Pilot Prera. The actually the Preras might be a little different. Um, but custom 74 for sure, Twisby pens. It's just friction fit in there. So if you take a rubber band, a fat rubber band, and you wrap it around the end of a pencil or something similar in size, kind of shove it in there, it gives you enough friction where you can just pull it right out. And then you can clean all around it. For pens like this, it doesn't really matter so much because you don't really see it. But if you do have like a demo or a translucent uh, cap, it can really make you happy to be able to clean it all out. So there you go, little hack. And you were going to get a question about your shirt. Um, so question about whether we'd be selling these. Um, we don't currently, we made these for our 10th anniversary for all of our team members. Um, but I think it's a great design and I think it's something we could consider. We, we've, we've sold t-shirts before. I have like a little Teespring store with a couple designs that threw together, but like. It's tough. There's a lot of different sizes and we normally ship pens, not shirts. So right. it's not quite our wheelhouse. But it's, I'd like to figure out a way to do more like. Uh, merchandise, swag. swag, things like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. I don't know how limited the Twisbees were for the first shipment. Um, I literally, I just don't know. Any news on the next Herbert Pen collaboration uh, exclusive? Herbert Pen Company exclusive. Yeah. Um, yeah we, we have, have one in the works. We're rating on the, cases. The pens are made. <laughs> Rickshaw is in San Francisco and they've been shut down pretty hard and they started making masks and other things too. But um we're just waiting on the pen slips to arrive. So we're still a couple weeks out. This, um, this kind of thing happens way more than you realize where basically there's some pen that is is like yet, yet to be released and they're waiting on like the outer sleeve of a box yeah. or a nib or a, you know, a random part that comes from a supplier and something gets held up and that's why delays can happen for months. It's crazy, but... We live yeah. in an interconnected world. Hannah, the ads you see on the YouTube videos, like the, the Goulet Swag, the pen cases, and, or the uh, phone cases and T-shirts. Yeah, those are designs I've uploaded. I haven't uploaded yeah, that's this our one, yeah. but I'm I'm sure I could. I don't know where that graphic is, though. We'd have to go looking for it. Yeah. Someone. We just did this internally. You know, sorry, I shouldn't have worn it. But <laughs> anyway. Any update on shipping? We are about a week behind. We've caught up primarily to June 10th, 11th orders. Um, that's what we're shipping out today and tomorrow. Um, so today's the 17th, so about a week behind. Um, I anticipate we'll remain about a week behind for the next, for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, well, we won't be a week behind perpetually for two weeks. We're looking to catch up two weeks from now. So it'll like slowly, you know, it'll be a week for a couple of days. It'll be six days, five days, four days. We are taking this Friday off for Juneteenth. And we also have July 3rd off which that will be caught up by july 3rd but Probably it's be caught up by then, yeah. but you know there's vacations and and time you know as whenever we've, as we've kind of ramped up and gotten more orders in as we've been getting more caught up that's more orders that we have yet to then yeah a week catch behind up, so is not bad there's some companies that like they're always a week behind for us we like to ship same or next day um yeah. two days if we're like crazy busy um, that's why we say one to two business days on our site, but most orders normally do one to two. We started um, out seven weeks behind when we started shipping in May. So yeah. we're not feeling too bad <laughs> given our circumstances. Um, as far as free shipping, um, no, we don't have any um, programs at this moment. We do have, if you sign up for our email newsletter, um, if you're in the U.S. or Canada, you do get a coupon for free shipping and there's no minimum with that. Um, but we don't have a ongoing free shipping program. Yeah. And frankly, we just need to catch up and get some stability and like rerun our numbers um, to figure out even yeah. how we could uh, affordably do that. And we're still behind. So we're not trying right. to like incentivize right. even more orders really right now until we get kind of caught up. Want to catch up right? We don't have Mont Blanc. Um, they won't sell to us because we don't have a brick and mortar because we are... Uh, Online only. Ironically, they require brick and mortar. You are 3,700 endoscopy procedures behind right now. That is a lot of endoscopy procedures. Holy moly. Wow. I've had one of those. That's a lot of procedures. I know. Holy cow. Yeah. I don't know what you do or where you are, but that just seems like that a seems lot. seems like a lot. I don't know how you catch up from that. I don't know how many is normal, but... <laughs> um let's see um, let's see here da, just da, your da, hospital da. wow the kiddos are good um Andrew's asking um they're out of school they're officially moving on to the next grade so they'll be in third and fifth in the fall which is still elementary for us um yeah I, teespring is where i do have a couple shirts mm -hmm. yeah we do um, i just need to upload a couple more designs i've honestly like i kind of forgot i had the store 
we sell like one a month, so it's not really like a big revenue generator for us or anything, but um, mm -hmm. it's just there. Um, yeah, the kids are good. They're playing video games and Legos and board games and arts and crafts and lots of Animal they're, Crossing. They're having a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Question from Goomba One Thousand: Have you ever influenced a pen manufacturer to make a design for a fountain pen? Yes. Um, we've done a lot of retailer exclusives, so that we always collaborate on. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, it's just different colors, not necessarily whole designs. Yeah, we chose this but, color. But yeah, but I mean, for sure, we have we have done some some whole designs before. We've worked with Edison, Herbert. Um, gosh, I pushed Lamy to do that purple safari. So yeah, yeah, we've worked with Conklin and Mont Blanc, or sorry, Monteverde, mm -hmm. Stipula. The SD um, sparkles should be here in, I want to say like a week or two. It might be a few weeks longer. It keeps kind of getting delayed, but I believe it should be within a week or two. They are on the, on the website. You can sign up for our email notification, but i um, not quite sure when the shipment's coming yet. Um, Crystal asked about left-handed cursive improvement books. And if mm. there are any out there, would we consider carrying it? So the answer to the second question is, yeah. To the first question, I'm not aware of any. So if I'm not aware of any specifically for specifically left for left-handed. So if anyone out there is aware of any left-handed resources, please uh, let us know. We would we would love to expand our offerings. I'm just not well, aware thing, of any. The thing I will say is that in um, Art of Cursive Writing from Michael Soule's book, which we Cursive do carry. Penmanship. Art of Cursive Penmanship, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he does have in there about left-handed and stuff like that. So it's not an exclusive left-handed book, but he talks about hand positioning and stuff for both left and right-handed. And then the overall principles of letter forming and stuff are the same. Um, it just has to do with hand position and stuff like that. So it is covered there and it does talk about left-handed, you know, proper formation and stuff like that, but it's not a specific left-handed book. I'm not aware of specific left-handed handwriting improvement books marketed in that way. Uh, a couple other questions. Do all orders come with the Goulet sticker or just the first order? So all orders come with the sticker. The first order is like the blue ink splatter, um, as well as like a, a card that I wrote out from us, um, you know, just a welcome to our company type thing. Subsequent orders get a random sticker. Um, we are due mm -hmm. to refresh some of the designs. Um, so if you keep getting the same ones, I'm, I'm sorry about that COVID kind of wreck things for us, but we have yeah. at least three to five in rotation. So there's mm -hmm. a good chance you'll get a different one each time. Okay. Um, and if you have any special requests, we're happy to honor those. Like, especially if you missed out on the blue splatter, or if you're like, I really want that goldfish or whatever. Um, if we have it, we'll just put a note in your order comment. We'll do, we'll, uh, do our best to honor that. Um, other questions before inking a pen for the first time, should pen flush be used or just distilled water? You don't really need pen flush right off the bat. That's really to clean up like dry, kind of old, crusty ink. Um, hopefully you don't have that in a new pen. Now, if it's a pen that you just found in a drawer for the first time or were given to you from a family member or somebody and you know that it's been around for a while, then pen flush may be necessary. Now, I will say with some new pens, um, Lamy, for example, uses blue ink to test out all of their pens. So there may be a little bit of blue ink residue with mm -hmm. your Lamy pen. It doesn't mean it's used. That just, they do that with all their pens. It's been um, tested, yeah. Twisby also tests their nibs before shipping. Um, they, don't, they, they clean them. They clean them. So if you ever see a little bit of residue, again, it doesn't mean it's used. Um, they're usually but, just left over from the testing process. Yeah, but, but, just, but just water, just water will fine. clean that out. So yeah, you'll be okay with just water on a brand new pen. Would you recommend Bay State Blue or Concord Grape? I don't know if this is like a- Comparis either, Comparing like it to you or more. lumping them both together? They're both- I, a, I like them both. I think Bay State Blue is more vibrant but the Concord grape is a good purple. It's a nice um, bright purple, yeah. Both of them are in the Bay State family, so they have a different pH, so don't mix them. High um, pH, high pH, yeah. Yeah, don't, so they're basic. Don't mix them with other non Bay Not State acidic. High is basic. High is basic. High is basic, yeah. Don't mix them with things that are more acidic. You're, it'll do weird things in your pen. Um, it'll and I will say gel inside the best way to clean the Bay State inks is a mixture of bleach and water as opposed mm -hmm. to ammonia and water. Mm -hmm. Don't mix bleach and ammonia. Another thing you should never do because that's idea. really bad for you. Um, but gas. like a 10 to 1 bleach or a 1 to 10, you know, a little bit of bleach, a lot of water <laughs> takes care of cleaning Bay State right up. Yep. Felix, um, Felix asks, you guys let your kids use fountain pens? Yeah. Of course. 
Uh, our daughter Depends was, on the pen. Yeah. I, I, Not every pen. I mean, sharp pens, but I've let her use my um, Twisby Egos. Twisby and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and she, she's handled those just fine. She's, yeah. she's eight. Other pens I'm not letting them touch yet. No, I'm not given like a flex pen or anything yet. Um, another question. I was under the impression iron gall inks were bad for fountain pens. Is that uh, not the case with modern iron gall inks? Any special precautions? That's a good question. So iron gall is one of those things that it can mean a lot of different things. Typically iron gall fountain pen ink is not really iron gall like you think of it. Like if you read about it on Wikipedia, it's not like, you know, the manufacturers like Rohr and Klingner or whoever is, is going out into their yard and grinding up oak galls and then just turning it into ink. That's the traditional way. It's very thick, it's very acidic, um, and that will corrode pens quite easily. Modern, use? modern formulated iron gall ink for fountain pens is still permanent like iron gall, but it's not quite as ag aggressive of a formula as what it used to be. So they are not the same maintenance requirements. It's still a good idea to clean them out of your pen regularly. And basically the, the darker the inks will turn and the quicker they turn black, the more kind of like true iron gall they are, like platinum classic ink. Um, and the KWZ, I believe, are fairly you know, tr you know, on the more traditional end. Diamine Registrar's ink is a little more traditional iron gall. Um, still not fully, but um, they're all still safe for fountain pen use. You just don't want to leave them in your pen for a long time, especially sitting there unused because it can corrode. Or your Sailor Sailor ink. I know we have one. Um, it's right here. Oh, great. Um, someone was asking about that, and we still have a good number of bottles. So I did want to show you guys um, the Sailor Sailor ink. Um, I had, this is my swab, and then I, it's not their swab we use on the site. I redid it. Um, but you know, the sailors, sailor, 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 um, on Tomoy river. So it's not, um, there is a little bit of sheen. Um, I am able to see just a little bit of red sheen here and on the, the Tomoy, but it's not like a crazy, like organic studio nitrogen sheener, such but a, it, it, it will be, packaging. but it, it, it'll be very well behaved. Um, and I brought some Q-tips and more will. paper. It format. just looks well behaved. So. <laughs> it's wearing a tie, like a bow tie, you know. Yeah. So you get this box. You get like a little booklet in well, booklet Japanese, explaining some things that we can't understand at this moment. And then the the, the evolution of their ink over time. There you go. Little bow tie to match the box. So yeah, you got um, yeah from the the ink studio. You know, you got the signature. Got all nice kinds bottle. Of, nice thick glass. All kinds of cards that you can't read because they're in Japanese. <laughs> Unless you read Japanese, then you can read it. But more power to you. Then you can very, tell us what they mean. Very nice box. There you go. So it's um, nice for a limited. You know, it's a limited edition ink. I so it's some um, paper and some Q-tips if you want to use it a little. Oh more. gosh, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> You already swabbed it, so I don't know what I'm going to be able to show. Well, that's on, like, cardstock. I just want to show it on some different paper. Okie dokie. Um, question, what are your opinions on the Diamond Music inks? They're really nice. Um, I think they don't get talked about a lot because you can only buy them as a whole set. And yeah, 100 definitely. some dollars is quite the investment. Anytime there's an ink where you can only get it as a whole and set. And then getting refills is kind of a logistical, you know, I don't want to call it a nightmare. I said, oh, that looks so pretty when it's wet. I just want to show why it's wet real quick. Oh, look at that blue. There you go. It's an interesting ink or is it smell too. Interesting smell? Yeah, it's not a scented ink, but it just Is it good? Smell. Um it's not like fragrant, you know. It smells like paper. It smells like I wouldn't say it's good. It's I just, don't smell anything. Oh, I smell it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not gonna drink don't it. Don't do that. Um, no, I like I like the Diamond Music Inks. I think they're very underrated. They don't get talked a lot about, but it is it is a commitment to get the whole Such set. Such a good so. blue. This is like good blue. My favorite cerulean. Now it dries a little more muted, but it's blue. so it that's does. on this on uh, Tomoy River here. It'll be drying through the remainder of the broadcast. And that is on um, Rodia. Still quite wet. I laid it on pretty wet. Yeah. Pretty wet. So there you go. Uh, let's it's see. It's a very nice blue. Do, do, do. Gotta say. If you're going to do a blue, doing it this shade is not a bad way to go. How's um, it compared to Konpeki? Um, it's very similar to Konpeki. Maybe yeah, a tad I think it's, especially in the writing, saturated. it's a bit darker. A tad more saturated. Definitely yeah. darker, because I, I write with that a lot. But it's a similar shade of blue. I don't know when the Prussian blue to us will be restocked. Probably sometime in July, but I, I just haven't heard. Um, Are the online slope 
can still or will they ever be available again? Um, they aren't just, I don't know. No, there is a new U.S. distributor because um, they, they changed distributors again. So um, they might be available in the future. Um, we don't have plans to stock them. They, they just didn't sell very well for us. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're good pens. They're, they're decent quality. They just weren't super popular. But there's a new distributor. So I don't know who has them or what availability or if they're even stocking the slope or if they still make the slope. But um, we, don't, we don't have them anymore. Yeah. Is it close to Liberty's Elysium? Um, I feel like it's a little more, um, I want to say mute, mute, it's not the right word, professional, I don't know. Like More professional than Liberty's like, Elysium? Like, what especially in the writing, like, Liberty's Elysium is a little bit, like, um, more, like, crayon blue, like, this is a little more sophisticated blue. <laughs> I don't understand your terminology <laughs> here. They say blue, crayon blue they versus say blue is going to be a lot more crayons like are all kinds of colors. in your face in this color. This is a bit more. I mean, it's wearing a bow tie like it's grown up. This is a professional ink. I wish I had like swaps of all these colors. I have I to do it from memory and it's they're very close. I have our in book on they're swatch, very, they're very close in shade. Yeah. Um, let's see. A uh, brand of a one time use disposable fountain pen. Yeah. A um, pilot varsity. Um, is a disposable fountain pen. Technically, you can refill it, but it's like um, you can hack it you under can... under four bucks. Um, it's pre-filled. You don't have to worry about filling it, getting your hands messy. It's a great introduction to fountain pens. Um, there are individual colors. You can buy like a seven variety pack. My mom loves those pens. Those are every time we see her, we give her like she another does. seven pack. Yes, indeed. Um, that's her. Her that's been the pen that we have gotten her to use as a non-fountain non pen user who now likes fountain pens. Those fountain pens. Yes, we do have the Riallo. You went to the office specifically I today do. to right get here. the Riallo. Let's show it. It's right here. Let's show it, Brian. Um, okay. As we're doing that, Fantastic Life says, Noodler's Bay State Blue versus the Sailor's Sailor. They're different blues. Yeah, I think Bay, Bay State, State Blue is, like is like way more like electric. punchy in your face. It's got a little purple to it. Bay State does. Ooh, you're getting, I, I'm seeing some sheen coming out here. Oh, this yeah. It's going to be fun to watch Sheen this. is going to happen, I'm telling you. You get this is a this is a um a Goulet notebook, which is like a little pocket notebook, it has Tomoe Roper paper in it. So there you go. Here's my Sailor Riello box. The most saturated blue ink you know of that isn't Bay State Blue. You love the ink, but the staining's a deal breaker. I mean, Noodler's mm -hmm. Blue is another really good, That's a good saturated one. blue that isn't as um, high maintenance as Bay State Blue, but it's like a good blue. Noodler's, Depends what you mean Noodler's by saturated. Blue. Saturate. You can have any shade that's really saturated. Sure. Like if you're talking like really dark blue, that's different than just saturated. I think like just really Noodlers? full of color I as opposed to like pastel and watery. Just knowing, who, knowing who, who Nathan is and what he stands for, he specifically formulates his fountain pen inks to have the absolute most amount of dye that can stay in suspension in an ink solution in Which, his inks. Fun fact is why Noodler doesn't have a lot of shaders. So we we asked Nathan before about making us like a high shading ink. Yes. It's, and he was I like, guess it's a little humorous because he was like, no, no, because the reason something shades is it has a higher ratio of water mm -hmm. um, in it. So fundamentally he doesn't believe in that because he feels like you're cheapening the product by yeah. adding more water. His logic is take a Noodler's ink, and dilute add, it. Add distilled water. So like take a little bit, a separate thing, add distilled water. He's like, water, just dilute it and then you can have your own shade. And then ink. you can make a Noodler's Ink shade. So I would love to see you guys, uh, what you come up with. Speaking of sheening inks from Noodler's, there is a new ink coming out that does appear to have some sheen. It's not a monster sheener as far as I can tell, but it does have some sheen. It's the Baltimore, I always forget what the second word is. Canyon. Canyon. I always think like Harbor and I was like, no, it's not Harbor. Aquarium? No, not Aquarium. Canyon. Baltimore Canyon. Canyon. I don't think of it like- It's fish related. I, I know, but I, I think of like, like the a Grand Canyon. Baltimore. I don't think of Baltimore as having like a big canyon. It's a water canyon. canyon. It's a canyon in the ocean. I know. I, I just, it's just not intuitive, but that's coming out really soon. We just heard about it like yesterday or today. Um, I did put up on the website today, um, but it's a blue that does appear to have a red sheen. I haven't and seen it in person for myself. But from what I have seen, it may have a sheen. And Noodler's Autumn and Azura does have a sheen as well. It's a mm -hmm. darker blue that has a red sheen. That's been around for forever. Um, so yeah, there you go. 
it was really funny because I was I was with Nathan in person when I saw him the one time I've seen him. And I asked him about doing a shading ink and he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> he was like, why would I put More water. less dye in an ink on purpose? And I was like, I don't know, people buy like <laughs> bottled water. I mean, you're literally buying water in a bottle. Like people will pay money for that if it's a service they want. And he just like, it just did not. I would love <laughs> if you guys have a Noodler's Ink and you like get a water mix. Um, again, don't like dump your whole bottle into water. Like just play with small quantities. Try one to one or one to two, you know, try different ratios. Or just one to one is a really high ratio. <laughs> that is a 50% solution. Start with like 10% water no, to I'm 90% someone, ink. someone has done that with their, I'm saying if you're okay. doing a small quantity, a milliliter, a milliliter, you know, and then experiment with the different That's ratios. a really high dilution for ink. My point I'm is, just saying, that's I all. would love to see what you come up with and like what like recipes or what like, oh, when I mix this ink with this much water, I get this result. And I'm like, I, I just want to see that You can stuff. do some really cool stuff with it. There's, it sample opens up. vials are great for that, especially if you use a sample and you're like, what do I do with this empty vial? Add water to Noodler's inks and see what happens. I mean, we literally sell empty packs of ink sample vials right, for exactly can, this can, reason. But you can also reuse, oh, you can reuse your for samples. For sure. You know, and you should. Well. Um, um, actually, yeah, yeah, don't use printer ink in fountain pens. But Nathan makes his own printer ink. He does. I've seen the printers for myself. He has many of them. That's how he prints the labels for his, his ink bottles. Yeah, organic studio he, nitrogen. A lot of people dilute that, and it just cuts down a little bit on the high maintenance. So, but you still get a lot of the beautiful color and properties. So Nathan, very saturated. Nathan specifically has like bought on like eBay and stuff this specific type of printer that you can't get anymore because now they have all kinds of computerized chips and stuff so that you can't reuse your own ink. But he's bought like these old printers and stocked up on them so that he, and he has mixed and formulated his own ink that he uses to print his labels that he puts on his bottles. Like these. Those are printed with his own. old inkjet printers that he has like MacGyvered into, you know, printing labels. It, it's as cool as it sounds. Um, it's pretty cool. Fantastic life. I'm going to answer your question by getting my pen and showing you while he shows off the Riallo. What pen are you talking about? This is a Riallo. This is the Sailor Riallo. This is, for whatever reason, there's not a lot of piston filling pens coming out of Japan. Um, the only one that I know of from Pilot is the Custom Heritage 92. Yes, that's right. Not 912, Heritage 92, um, which is just not all that popular. And it's quite a bit more expensive. Um, just for that piston capability. The Rialo is kind of the same way. They don't have nearly as many as exciting colors. This is um, 352. Um, MSRP is 440. Uh, our price is 352. So this is the Pro Gear uh, standard or like the mid size, if you will, um, with an ink window with a piston. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not remember the ink capacity, but I know we, we measured it. Yet. I think Crystal may have done it this morning. Something, yeah. Check our website. If we did it, it's on there. And if it's not, we have it. <laughs> and we will. It, soon. And we'll do very soon. Um, there's only two colors. I wouldn't um, anticipate it to be a super high ink base. There's probably like maroon, one mil or something like that. There's the maroon with uh, gold trim and the and black, black with, gold trim. with gold trim. So at least there's two options. But you do get the full range of nib sizes. When will we have a Gula exclusive sailor? Hopefully next year. I mean, we're we're talking. We're talking. We're talking, but um, don't get excited right away because it's, it's a just going to take process and it's not a guarantee. But they've done it with a bunch of other retailers, oh, so sure. it's 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 in conversation. It's just we got to fit within their production Here schedule. Comes the sheen. There you go, and then the Rodia. The Rodia is probably a little more accurate as to how it'll look on everyday paper. So this to me looks a lot more like a compacty type of thing. Mm. Like you're not going to get a, like a red sheen kind of thing. This it's it's it's, it's a little bit little bit flatter in color. But is the like, Diplomat like Arrow steel nib softer than the Vanishing Point gold nib? No. The gold, gold nib's going to be softer than the steel nib. Yes. I do really like the steel nib. So there was a question about a pen. I don't know if I covered enough about the oh, Riallo. Okay, go ahead. I mean, the program, it's, it's really similar in overall size and, and everything. The weight is, is really pretty similar to me. I don't know. We'll have full dimensions and everything, but... It's really, really, really similar to the regular program. It does have the two-tone nib, which is cool. So it's the 
it's the gold on the edges. Oh, you really can't see on this live stream video, but um, so it's like silver in the middle there, gold in the very center, and then gold on the edges. So these, um, the maroon looks really and nice. the black are the only two colors currently available. So yeah. if there ever are more, for sure we would consider. Um, there are a couple questions I really want to answer. Um, I'm looking for an A5 Tomway River Journal doc letter line. What do you suggest? Endless works. Um, is uh, We ones. have the Goulet notebooks. And if you just want like a floppy cover, you know, just a knock around. <laughs> I've, I've had this like a long time. It's, Boy, you're really selling it. No, you I'm want saying... a flimsy, <laughs> floozy cover. If then you want a value product. No, it's meant to be a refill. You know. Yeah, but I'm saying like if you stick it in your pocket, it's gonna be a little worn. If you want like more of a, a journal journal, like you know, with like elastic strap and the whole works, endless works, um, our A5 dot grid with Tomway River paper. So definitely check those out. Um, they are on our site in a couple colors. Um, we there. haven't discussed the new Pin Niter or the new Aurora 88, but yeah, there's a lot of new stuff coming. There's a lot of new stuff coming. Real quick, um, there was a question about I'm scrolling up. There's, you guys have been a, a very talkative. Is there a pen you own that you prize so much you don't use or ink? I have two pens like that. One of them is still on my desk in the office and I can't show it to you, but it is a Yoshi uh, pen. It is a pink cherry blossom pen. Um, and it has like a, a cherry blossom branch with the flowers and it's pink and cherry blossoms are super special to me because they represent- So Yoshi's an independent craftsman. Yeah. Um, sells the pen shows and stuff. Bought it full price at pen show um, mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Um, cherry blossoms are special to me because I connect them with um, our miscarriage that we had, which is four years ago this past weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and we planted cherry blossom tree to remember the daughter we lost. So cherry blossoms are really special to me. Um, I have my uh, Jake Weidman and his wife, Hannah, have a kind of a side business uh, every day heirlooms um brian this was my mother's day slash birthday gift um i'll let you be able to oh, see you're this not really gonna be able to see no. the detail it's no, a cherry blossom three cherry three blossoms, cherry blossoms three for my two kids and one in heaven and on the back i have oh boy here we go their names oh come on oh no yeah, you just can't really see the detail. It's okay, it says Joseph, Ellie, Hannah, and Jake engraved that, and it's really special. So, um, yeah, Terry Blessings are very special to me, so I haven't inked it up yet. Um, I might. I just, it's really pretty, and it just stands on my desk <laughs> in a glass pen holder. It's more like it. artwork than anything yeah. at this point. Yeah, so this, yeah. We're not regular yeah, about it gifts. With, it could with Noodler's Tokyo gifts. That's sometimes a great, we, that's a great idea. Sometimes we exchange gifts and sometimes we don't. And so sometimes when we do, he makes up for, you know, when we have it for a while. So this was really, really special. I was a wreck when he gave it to me. Would you rather have like a dozen roses every year or like sometimes nothing and sometimes next amazing week, things? Next week, I'll share what I got him for Father's Day. It's not, not anything. I near. accidentally opened it today when he I got did. the mail. So I was like, oh. Literally didn't even register that it was for me. It's not, for it's just not on the same caliber, but it's, it's anyway. And then my other pen that I haven't inked up yet, that's really my most expensive and really precious to me is my. You haven't inked that, huh? No, I haven't. And I know I would love the nib and everything. You would. I've inked mine. It's a medium. Um, oh yeah, that's a good one. This is the Namiki Yukari Nightline Moonlight. And these we've been out of stock on for like three years. Three and a half years? They're still on back order. We're still waiting for I don't for think we've, have we ever had one. Yeah. To sell. Yeah. We did? Yeah. Okay. When we first uh, launched Namiki, but we've been out of it for like three years. Um, yes, I am a sucker for Rodden. And this is just gorgeous. Um, yeah. And so this is like a prize grail pen that I haven't inked up. I really could ink up. But it, yeah, Lou, it's, Lou knows what's up. It's that just really special. Rodden is the best. Like this Rodden. Woo! That one's ridiculous. This is the Pelican M1000 Green Ray. Rodden Green Ray. That sucker's inked no, right now. No, I know Namiki's. I just wrote with this one today. I know Namiki's. I wrote a, a, I wrote a letter experience. with this one today. I got a Sailor Haha in this one. It's a good matchup. I do have, um, it's like 20 years old, a Namiki, uh, like the custom impressions. Um, which I believe this is similar nib as the Custom 74, but I really, Identical. I love that pen. I love how it writes. Whew. It's a good one. I love Rod and anything sparkly. What oh, numbers yeah. do we have? Oh, like, well, I don't know what. It's on there. It's on the, uh, the cap at the top, underneath. There you go. Ah, this is 260. Um, we have a few left in stock. I'm not in the office. I can't check what numbers they are, although they're probably on our spreadsheet. We do have a spreadsheet tracker. We do. 
Um, if you're curious, you can send us an email and we'll, we'll let you know if you are interested and you want to know what numbers we have and you can pick. Um, do we plan on stocking any different Pelican Rodden M1000 models, prefer preferably with a less symmetrical design? Um, this is they the only one them. that I believe is currently available. They're all limited editions. They've had ones in the past, but we don't get a choice about what they make. It's like take it or leave it, and we're lucky to get any ever when they make them. So uh, if they make them in the future, for sure, we will try to get them and then carry them. Is there a possibility of Goulet carrying Sailor Studio inks? You'd love a U.S. source for samples. Um, not at this time. It's limited to those who have a brick and mortar presence, uh, which we do mm. not. If they change that, okay. I would be interested. A um, hundred colors is a lot to stock, yes. but um, I know there's some stellar colors in there, so I would be I would be interested. But we're, it's not it's not currently ink. available to us. Ink, yeah. That'd be a lot of samples too. Yeah. Um, do limited edition numbered pens get shipped out in order or are the numbers randomly sent out? Um, it's basically random because so, it depends on the nib size. Yeah, it is. And generally, though, we from, usually get a mix of numbers, too. Well, no, generally from the manufacturer to the retailer, we do get our numbers in chunks. I think what happens is the manufacturer sends out to distributors in chunks and then they send out to retailers in chunks. Out, so yeah. it might be that. But again, how they do the numbering might vary. So like one through 400 could be extra fine. And then 401 through 700 could be medium or whatever. And so then you might have a, we might get a 200 and a 600, or they could be all in order and then they put, it, it really depends. It depends but a lot. generally a lot. we do get things in batches. It's rare that we'd be like, we got 73 and 52 and 764. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just thinking of random numbers. It's usually more random. They're usually like in a grouping. And then as far as how we send them out, it's it's kind of first off the shelf, unless there's a special request, then we try to honor it. Yeah. Do we ever get letters from customers? Absolutely. And we have a letter mm -hmm. wall in our office where we do hang um, some of our favorites, especially the most like uh, visually appealing. Like there's a lot of letters we get that like, right, you know, are so heart touching. And then there's others that like, they're they're visually they're eye touching uh, eye touching so we do have a wall of course we're not in the office right saying. now but um it's a weird expression yeah so uh please do still write us letters even though we're remote we still check our mail and we still read them if we can't write you back right away it's just we're, we're doing our best but um we do appreciate when we do get letters Are um we? and will we be carrying the so we have the pro gear Riala. will we do the 1911 Riala in the future uh possibly um, it's available to us. We debated two, it. We, we really debated colors. hard about doing it. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's big, interest in it for sure. There's a question that reminded me of one earlier about our next Edison collaboration. And, and so someone asked what's happening with Edison Nouveau's. So um, our last seasonal edition was back in the winter with the premiere. Um, and we do still have winter, fall, and a few summers in stock. So they've definitely slowed down, um, which it's actually then worked out well that we had a nice little break. Um, we are, so that was the last of the seasonal premiere run. Um, so we still have the three regular edition colors and then we have those three seasonal. We are working on our next limited edition exclusive collaboration. Um, it will be different. It won't necessarily be a premiere and it won't necessarily be a material you've seen before. Um, part of why we're, we're getting away from the seasonal premieres is so we have the option to do more exciting things, possibly smaller runs, possibly different price points, but really exciting um, things we've never done before. So we're currently designing. It would be August at the earliest, but we are in talks. Yeah. I'm excited. Do we make pens also? No, no, we don't. Um, we do collaborate, but we don't We don't make them. Mm -hmm. Is the Stipula mm -hmm. Ventidue Gold, the Gold Touch, a numbered release, exclusive and limited? Yes, yes, and yes. They're numbered out of 300, um, just for us. Um, and there will be a silver touch coming out in the winter. We almost sold out a gold touch and then we just got like 20 more in. I guess they were somehow some confusion. We're hiding somewhere. I don't know, or a repair or something that got, I don't know. There's like 20 some more gold touches left and then that's it. And then um, in the fall, we'll have a silver touch. So it's if you like the gold good. touch. It's gonna look good. But you like silver, it's basically that. <laughs> yeah. I have like a, a sample of the barrel. I can I can show you. I'm like getting up a lot. Oh, go for it. Would we do a Mina? Better Possibly. you than me. Possibly. Um, we could. I like number six and it's better. 
Um, Mr. Best Beatles fan one, have there ever been a product, pen or ink, for from companies that require brick and mortar stores for you to consider opening one? Yeah. No. What? Oh, for us to consider opening one? No. Sorry, I'm just, I said it was in the first part of the question. You did not yeah. listen to that question. I got excited. Here's the silver touch. Um, this it's is like a sample. Pretty. It is pretty. This is a sample of the cap. It's got silver flakes wow. in there. It's clear. It looks Ellie, Ellie, stop pushing. What do you think? Do you think what this word, is pretty? What word would you guys use to describe this? Pretty. Shiny. Pretty. Sparkly. Pretty. 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 Any other it? words? You heard it here. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Yes, the kiddos. Oh, you need to get some bows for daddy. He's got a lot of hair. So he needs a lot of bows. Can you do that? Yeah. Just we're, pick we're, like five. We're, we're going to be done nuts. in like 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. We don't need to go nuts. <laughs> oh, gosh. We got a question about the Zoom nib, and I wanted to talk about that real quick. Yeah. Because that is unique to Sailor. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Um, we could consider the Banu Minima. I don't like that it it's con uh, cartridge only; doesn't take a converter. We're, we generally don't do as well with that, but I'm I'm open to it. Um, we don't have any needy plans. Are there any non-clear custom seventy four? Yes, but not in, in the U.S. Um, they're only overseas. They haven't imported those in. So Paul asks, "Do you think the Sailor Zoom nibs are worth it? They're cool. I you actually a got a Zoom on, on this. this one." And I have several pens now that have Zoom nibs on them because you can only get them from Sailor. So they're an interesting nib. We show them a little bit in our Sailor overview video. I do have plans at some point to do a follow-up video showing specifically how these nibs write. Um, but basically it writes really fine when you have it straight up and down and it writes fatter when you write low like this. So if you are trying to get line variation and you're not really trying to get flex per se, like springing the nib to get it to right wetter. Um, if, you know, if that's not the way you want to go about it, this is a really good alternative option. And it's really cool. And if you just like to write with a really, really broad wet nib and you have a low pen angle like me, the zoom nib is fantastic for that. A lot so of in questions. my opinion, it is worth it if you're in the market for something like that. Um, we have a little bit of merch, not much um, on our Teespring store, but we don't even like have it linked from our site. So merch is an area that we could, uh, expand later that hasn't been a lot of questions hard. someone asked if we're gonna do a goulet ink line kind of like um you know ackerman type thing um not this year it's something we've talked about um and we've actually talked to different manufacturers um about you know doing a white label goulet ink for us but um not something we're pursuing this year um open to it for sure more goulet products is, is definitely a good thing um i noticed you only have limited edition m1000s do you plan to carry the regular editions um We've tried them a couple of times they usually yeah. don't sell super great for us yeah they're, they're there's still some pricing things where they're just so much more affordable to get from europe that we have a hard time selling them just because when you're online you know people price shop and um there's still a decent price discrepancy but i'm i'm open to exploring it for sure and we get scammed on them a lot for whatever reason they just attract yeah. a lot of fraud yeah so when we did carry them Ironically before from europe but yeah well, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's fraud, so it's not real. Um, but we have gotten frauded and lost quite a bit of money on them before. It's a shame, but it happens in online. That's retail. not a reason not to carry it. It's just no. But when that's the majority of your orders, then you drop <laughs> like that nine pen. out of ten of them are fraud. Yeah, that's not that's that not was, good, that was good business. That was many years ago, and our, it was, our customer it was a while base ago. Has, has grown it was a while ago. If we can sell a rod in M1000, I'm sure. Yeah, but that we thing is people. ridiculous. It's very in cool. A, the best of ways. When things get back to semi-normal, will Q&A with Brian and right now be coming back or do something else in the works? Great question. I have no idea. I don't know when we're going to be back to normal <laughs> or semi-normal or what even is semi-normal. Um, we are. We don't have, we have a videographer contractor right now. We don't have an in-house videographer, but even just with COVID trying to arrange things has been uh, challenging. It's been a little ridiculous. So, I mean, maybe, I mean, we loved Q and A. We didn't really want to stop it. We just needed kind of a break and then all the COVID stuff happened to coincide with that anyway. So we have a survey that we did right as we were taking a pause in March um, around COVID and everything. Um, so I have a lot of survey feedback. I think we had something like 2,700 responses yeah, at least. to our survey from YouTube, which is a lot of feedback. 
um, to the point where we actually had to get a, um, a like professional researcher to help us go through all the qualitative feedback. I mean, we read it ourselves, but it was so much, we just couldn't even analyze it properly. <laughs> so gold being, star. Oh my, this is amazing. I'm sporting some kind of look right now. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> for sure, I would be open to doing a Q and A. I mean, we're doing it right now. We're literally doing a Q and A type thing. It's just you know, yeah, exactly. So yeah, we could do it. Do you have those? They really want to see. Oh, ooh, barrettes are good too. Oh, that one. Yes, and this one. Yes. Is there Eric ask Eric asks, is there a hundred to hundred and fifty dollar pen you'd recommend for relatively new yeah. fountain penners? I would say if you're relatively new, you don't even have to spend that much. To be honest with you, you could, but I mean, there's a lot of really good gold nib fountain pens that are in that $140, $150 range. That's like the low end of range that you're going to get for a gold nib fountain pen that you can really enjoy as a beginner. You're talking Lamy 2000s, Pilot Custom 74, Pilot Vanishing Point. You're talking, you know, sound hardly phased. Um, <laughs> Except that you are. Talking, you See, know. You completely forgot what you were saying. Ooh, I Pilot E95S. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good entry level entry level gold nib pens that are fantastic for beginners. Um, do you have to start there? No, you can start with something like a Pilot Metropolitan, Lamy Safari, Twisby Eco, Diplomat Magnum. You can get something in the twenty-ish dollar range and get a really good pen. You can get all of those steel nib pens for less than what you're talking about here combined. No, we don't so. have any uh, clip-on earrings, but that would be. Oh, if we have a pretty, pretty, do we still have pretty, pretty princess? Or did we give that away? What? Remember that game where you have like all jewelry with a clip on your, never mind. Favorite vintage yeah. pen. Favorite vintage pen. Oh, I know mine. Go ahead. My favorite vintage. I don't have one. Well, oh man. The, the Namiki Custom Impressions is really cool. It's a celluloid. It's like a, basically like a Pilot Custom 74 that's made out of celluloid. It's kind of amazing. But I think my one of my favorites, I, I do love the Schaefer Snorkel, the technology, and it's really cool. The Parker 51 is just iconic, and I love the design of that. But I think it might have to be the Pilot M90 for me. I just love the design of it. It's got an integrated stainless steel nib. It just looks so cool. Um, the Diamond Blue Editions, yeah, they did sell it pretty quickly. Um, more coming in about a month, so um, mid-July for a restock. I was going to put them in the newsletter today and I checked the stock this morning. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're out of almost all of them. Let me not promote this today. So Shrish has a good question. With the price <laughs> with the price increase of the Lamy 2000, would you still call it a starter gold mid pen? It's still... I um, would. I would. Yeah. I mean, it's still under... You're still within like tens of dollars of the yeah. least expensive gold mid pens you can possibly it's get. It's still so. under 200, right? Yeah. Yeah by the time you get like street price, so to speak. So it's not the least expensive gold nib pen, but it's definitely in the starter range. Okay. <laughs> wow. This is a look. I'm like, where has she acquired all these things? That's what I, I want to know. Couldn't even tell you. How much did the price increase? Yeah, Rebecca knows herself. Um, Rebecca loves the M90. I was like, you know, I lost too. that ring. Yeah. <gasps> you found it. So Eric says, I've been working my way up from the Safari 580 and I'm thinking of rewarding myself for being isolated so long. There you go. That's going to be the tough thing is rewarding yourself with what though is the question. So several of the gold nib kind of entry level pens that you get into are, are great, but they are all a little bit unique from each other. Like a vanishing point has got that click retractable thing. That's really unique, relatively small me. nib. Mm -hmm. The Pilot Falcon is really good, but it's got that soft nib and that can take some getting used to. Lamy 2000 is a great pen. Not everybody loves it, but a lot of people do. They're honestly all so good. It's hard to go wrong with any of them. Fantastic Life, what's the hype of the Pilot Custom 74? Uh, I am the hype of the Pilot Custom 74, I really I like it too. It's a really fun writer. Um, should you? It's just, a really, it's just a really good writer. That's really about it. You look at it and it's like, it's a nice looking pen. It's not super flashy, but it's just such a comfortable writer. Should you worry your pen came from China and shipped overseas? If you're talking about COVID, no. Um, by the, the amount of time it takes to travel and nope. yeah, you, you don't. Not a that. chance. Yeah, you're fine. Can you recommend me a fountain pen? I am a student. We actually have a, quite a few videos on YouTube about fountain pens for students. We do. Um, the new Platinum Prefonte would be a good one as well. Like, there's one. a lot of new Okay, ones. which one do you want to see? Twisby gets recommended a lot for students because it has a large ink capacity. I love the ego. You can see when it's running out of ink, which is really nice. 
I like how you pick this like small conservative bow to go with in your hair. I'm on the other side too. Meanwhile, I look like a <laughs> flapper from the 20s here. Ow. <laughs> Ow. There we go. All right, we are almost at 10 o'clock here. Is that a headband? I think yeah. it's a headband. Yeah, it's a necklace. You look surprisingly tasteful as I look very interesting. I know what will make you more interesting. She thought she, this is the ring I gave her. She thought she left it in her desk at school and then COVID hit. And then she got her school supplies and it wasn't in there. So she thought it was lost forever. She found it. It's a fidget ring. It's really cool. Oh, like that is cool. You gave it to me. Yes. I and, so then I gave, and then that. I gave it to Ellie. <laughs> Do you answer all your questions, even those you did not get to answer live? Um, we Yeah, we can't answer everything during this time. But if you have a question you would like answered, please send us an email. So now I'm getting the royal treatment. That looks so pretty. Um, we, have, very Marty girl. we have a customer care team who's ready, willing to answer your questions, um, especially if it's about, you know, I'm trying to choose between this pen or troubleshooting or cleaning or just really anything other you than. You get like, pink and you get purple. Anything other awesome. than like us personally, they're happy to answer. So oh, yeah. um, feel free to send us an email if we didn't get your question um, answered. Um, I'm sorry if we didn't. Some of it's just blurred by and it's just running out of Here, time. Here, Mommy, you can yeah. have the flower. Thank you. And so, the bow. Our team is doing well during this weird time. You know, everyone's got, you know, different personal issues and stuff going on. Um, I would say we're all in the same boat. It, we all have our different flavors and how we're dealing with things. Um, but we are... All in this together, our team is very unified. They're all uh, loyal, they're all hardworking um, and we're being very flexible with each other too. So um, yeah, and just a reminder, we are closed this Friday for Juneteenth and um, you know, we'll be we're still catching up on orders. We're about a week behind, but we're catching up and doing our best. And we have a lot of new products coming. I have a lot of things to create. We got photos to shoot. So there's a lot of new exciting things coming. We're all in the same boat and we're all seasick. We're all seasick. That's yeah. a good way to put it, Mark. John Mark. says he just got a Natuno Black Sands 1911. Fantastic pen, but I've never seen a video on it. It deserves one. So they're winding down that pen, right? Like, aren't no. they Are they keeping that going? going the yeah. Black Sands? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can keep that up. Have yeah, we, we done we, a Natuno video? We, we haven't really. Look, that hit right before COVID. So, yeah, like, we last haven't. Year. No, he just got one before. No, we, oh, I'm, thinking of my aura. I'm thinking of my aura. Yeah. Which is made by the same company. Yeah. No, the the um the tuna was last year. Right. We just haven't gotten just haven't done it. There's a lot I haven't done videos on. Yeah, more Working infant on. colors will be here in about a month. Let's mm -hmm. wait for more. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the latest you can order have your stuff from mid-August back to school? I would say beginning of August would be yeah. very safe. Again, right now we're a week behind, but normally we're one or two days out, depending Here's on where you live. Headband. You know, shipping is typically a couple days if you're international. Um, obviously, allow a bit longer. Um, yeah. And if you are international, choose FedEx. FedEx is way faster than the standard, but it is more expensive. So it's, it's that's why, because it's really fast. All right. We are out of time. Ellie, yes. can you say bye? Say bye to all the people. One more bell. Thank you to Cindy, Cynthia for the Juneteenth support. We'll be closed on Friday. So that we can celebrate, our team can celebrate. Or volunteer. Celebrate or... what? Juneteenth. Juneteenth on Friday. What's Juneteenth? Oh, we're going to be teaching you about that, my dear. Oh, can I be in it? Because we did not learn about it in our school system. Nope. So we are we are learning. And we, and are, we are the school system right now for our children. <laughs> we, are, we are educating ourselves and um, yeah. you know, doing what we can. That's right. All right, everybody. We are going to go and get our kids to bed because it's 10 o'clock at night where we are. Um, yes, Juneteenth is a uniquely American holiday. So if you're in the UK, you've probably never heard of it, but it celebrates the, it. um, freedom, the, 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 uh, freedom of the slaves. Basically it was when the word finally got to, to the Texas, last of, yeah. of Texas, the last of the slaves and truly freed all, all people. American citizens were um, actually free. So it, celebrates it. it was June 19th, um, 1865. So it's been like 155 years it has been celebrated, but um, just not widely known not by widely, everyone. Not so. widely, but it's, it's getting on a lot more awareness. Our governor um, is shutting down the executive branch of the state government to celebrate too. So 
um, you know, it's definitely, uh, definitely something worth le learning a little bit more about, especially if you live in America. Good answer. Cool. All right. We're going to, we're going to bounce everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now Rachel's, now Rachel's joining me here. This is great. Especially with this. Thank you everybody. Like yep. Here's a, here's a pink bow. Are right, you going to say, you want to say goodbye kids? Say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see this out. We'll see. We'll see out this last bow here. I have like more headbands. You can come around your neck. Why not? There you go. Oh, oh. here's a unicorn headband. Oh, I like it. Ooh. I like it. It's upside down. Oh, okay. Okay. Whatever. I think we now use every head thing she has. No. All right. Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night. I am for Brett. Good night.